How are we doing, everybody? Um, James and I have just had a lengthy conversation about the intricacies of uh, Barcelona and their financial situation. That was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, look, guys, all jokes aside, we want to talk about football. We want to talk about on the pitch. Transfers are fun and interesting and stuff, but we care about inside the white lines. We care about moments. You know, that's what that's what this sport's all about. So, James, without any further ado, let's get right back onto it. Um, Javi Hernandez, obviously you've been speaking to the media a lot recently, like a lot of managers and coaches have across all the big clubs, but with Barcelona at the moment, there's a lot of intrigue to what's going on right there. And Javi had some comments regarding Frankie de Jong, who's obviously been heavily linked with, with Manchester United, reuniting with, uh, with Eric Ten Hag. Some recent rumours about Chelsea and, and how he'd like to go to Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea have had some tough luck this window so far, uh, also thanks to Barcelona. Um, Courtesy of Fabrizio Romano, Javi on the Dion deal. I'm not here to send messages. Also, I love the way he says I'm not here to send messages and then sends <laughs> sends like 20 like under the radar messages. Um, I'm not here to send messages. I already spoke with Frankie. I value him very much. He's a key player. But then there's an economic situation and financial fair play. And then he added later, James, this is the real kicker. He can give us a lot at centre back as well. Tell me that that reminds me of like one of those memes of like, tell me you're trying to force somebody out of a club without telling me you're forcing somebody out of a club. Do you know Listen, what I mean? If, if maybe let me give Frankie De Jong a little bit of advice. Now, if you ever like for guys and girls out there, you ever got a thing where you're trying to pursue, rather if it's a boy or a girl, whatever, whatever sex you are whatever, let's say you're trying to pursue somebody and they give you a clear indication that they don't like you or they don't want you, surely you wouldn't want to stay in their company and constantly pursue them because that comes off after a while as a bit creepy, yeah? And, you know, who wants to be unwanted? Like, seriously, at, a, at, at, at any stage of a relationship, why would you want to be unwanted? And the fact that Frankie Young would be getting hint after hint after hint, statement after statement um, from loads and loads of different people that are um, that are represented by Barcelona talking about his future. And the fact that he still wanted to stay put has me really worried, Jack. Because you talk about being disrespected. If I'm Frankie Young, it's like, if, Jack, if I'm a football player, first of all, there's rumours about money that's old. He's asking me to cut my wages. And then it's like, I won't be able to play it in my preferred position. And even then, like, if you want after, me to play in that position. After announcing Jules Kunde, <laughs> who's going to play in that position too? Exactly. And you got to ask yourself right now, as a centre-back, is Frankie de Jong the top two or even top three as a Barcelona centre-back? No. Sam, like, drag, drag Samuel Ntiti out of Barcelona B. He can do a better job at centre-back than Frankie de Jong. I know, I'm, I'm not trying to disrespect Frankie as a centre-back. I'm sure he's a great ball player and stuff. But when it comes to defending, I, I don't know where he's going to be. Jack, Jack listen. I, I remember I was speaking to Timmy was eating, and he was telling me about how Frankie played there for Ajax. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. As a, um aggressive ball player uh, and mainly what it and mainly what his job is there to do is to carry the ball forward you know but that's only a small part of being a center back jack being a be like like to me being a center back having to read the game having to push up stay up, like on the line and the biggest thing for me is that when i look at players let's say midfielders who have converted into center back jack nine times out of ten they're aggressive ball winners right yeah Frankie mm. de Jong isn't an aggressive ball winner. You look at somebody like, let's just look at Barcelona, for instance, right now, when they had ha Javier Mascherano there. Javier Mascherano's biggest tra trade for me was defensively. It wasn't yeah. the way he progressed the ball forward by passing it. It was what he did when his, op what, like, like when his team didn't have the ball and his ability to read the game and win the ball. They signed Alex Song at the time. They looked at Alex Song from the point of view of what he was able to do off the ball, Sergio Busquets, what he could do off the ball. When Yaya Torre played there, what he could do off the ball. I don't look as Frankie De Jong, and I don't think that he has um, as great of a de like defensive nous compared to them guys there. Right. On the ball, it's a completely different story. But sure. what you're trying to tell me is that going forward in Champions League games, big Champions League games, when Barcelona play on the halfway line, let's say they pay 
PSG and he has to run back and defend ha- Mbappe. Haaland and Mbappe running at you, right? You forget about it. Forget about it. It's ridiculous. It, um, it's- what, what I'll say though, mate, what I'll say, the biggest indictment for me, and this is something we see a lot in football, in my opinion. When you, when somebody's not for sale, you say it with your chest. You say, he's not going anywhere. You say, that's what I, I used De Bruyne as the example recently. If you ask Pep Guardiola, is Kevin De Bruyne going anywhere this summer? Kevin De Bruyne is going to go, he, yeah, he'll laugh, but he'll go, no, Kevin De Bruyne is not for sale. Kevin De Bruyne is not going anywhere. The moment you drop in, uh, well, I really like him and I really value him. I'm, I'm already deaf to that. I'm already numb to that, first of all. The second part, we do have a financial and economic situation, though. Well, there's your real answer. There's your real answer right there. And again, this is not as easy. I know you said about pride and, and the relationship analogy you used. Reports, I think his family are happy. His kids are at school. It's his dream club. So so this isn't as easy as it may seem initially. But James, we're way too deep now to, to think that this will just be resolved. And as we talked about in, in the other Barcelona video that, that we've just done, please go check that out, guys. Um, he's owed money and I think at the moment the choice is you take a pay cut and you can stay thumbs up or you get sold or we can be real hard on you and maybe we don't even register you maybe we don't even register you to really just force you out of the club right and that's that's this is this is the problem that we're finding Frankie de Jong's way too good and and James again from Manchester United's perspective if this guy is so keen to stay you want him at your football club that's to, I'd be, be I'd part. be on to my second best option, my third best option. I'd be scouting and chatting, and Yuri Tielemans and Ruben Neves are the one of the two that I've seen on Twitter and on on news feeds and stuff. I'd be looking at what that might look like in terms of a transfer. Now I'd have done that a week, two weeks, a month ago, based on based on what I'm hearing. Jackie, to be fair, you can probably get a boat with them for the same price as Frankie. <laughs> And right. I just listen. I just look at it from this point of view for Manchester United is that I've, like I've said this in, in, in like previous videos. You look at the situation Manchester United have. That is perfect for a player like Frankie De Jong to come in and walk into it and be the man, especially in that midfield. You look at Barcelona right now. The fact that Barcelona are willing to let him go, Jack. Could you imagine if let's say um, Iniesta? In yes, at his absolute best, Barcelona were willing to let him go. What they like, what Barcelona are trying to tell me is that we have midfielders, we have, I'm not, I don't even want to talk about defenders, but we have defensive midfielders, number eights and number tens, better than you. Yeah, that's what, what it's given out to me. Because mm-hmm. if Frankie today was as valuable as they make him out to be, Jack, there would not be an inkling. Yeah. There would be a thing you are listen you are my man you're gonna be one of the first names on the team sheet from from kessie from kessie wouldn't have been signed period free transfer or not whether you like the no. value or not from kessie would not have been signed at all um james what, what i'll say though his hesitation to leave barcelona he's 25 it's a long old career and Frankie de Jong is not a Kylian Mbappe or one of these like electric pace guys that when when the speed part, when one part of his game goes, it's over for him. This is a guy who could, if he looks after his body right, could play well into his mid to late 30s. Well, massively he, he, in terms of his style of play. You go to Manchester United as a 25-year-old, you could be playing in the Champions League when you're 26. I, I don't get this. He, he seems, from what I've read and what I've seen, I don't know this, he seems to have this thing in his head like a Cristiano Ronaldo. I have to be playing in the Champions League. It's like, dude, Cristiano Ronaldo's like 38 years old and he only cares about his legacy and what he's trying to do. You're 25. And clearly this club doesn't want you, so you need to go to a better situation. This, this, this is this Champions League obsession. I don't seem to understand. And to me, surely that can't be it because... If that's the case, I'm hearing Chelsea are interested in him. There's, this, there's so many football clubs that Frank and Dion can move to. I don't seem to understand, like from his point of view, is that a team has showed you this amount of disrespect. And they've clearly made it an indication that we don't want you here. Yet you are an asset that we can sell and profit off. Why do you still want to be there? Surely I do understand families and things like that. But right. surely you, you got to get to a point where... You got to look at yourself and what's going to benefit you. Also, because 
if they're going to keep taking money out of your pocket too, which is what's basically been happening, like, are you really looking after your family? I mean, I'm sure he's made enough money already in his, you know, short career to, to be set for life. But still, you know, if, if daddy's going to make more money, <laughs> he needs to be paid the full amount, not deferring his wages all the time. And Jack, the biggest thing for me, and I'm, I'm going to mention this, and, and hopefully Frankie's listening here. Yeah, I'm sure he is. This is another, <laughs> this, hopefully you are Frankie. Yeah, you know, definitely We're looking subscribe out for me. Boxer Box Football. <laughs> we are, we are. We and Jack really want to take care of Frankie's best interest, but it's a World Cup year. The World Cup starts in November. Does he really want to be in this limbo where he's not sure if he may get 90 minutes every single week? Like Jack, he is too good of a player to be wondering, oh, am I going to get on the pitch this week? James he wants in his... Ryan Gravenberg has just gone to Bayern Munich. If Ryan Gravenberg has a great start, I don't know what the Dutch national team first 11 looks like, but I know Ryan Gravenberg's rough position that he likes to play. And I'm just saying, if you're Louis van Gaal and you've got Ryan Gravenberg killing it at, at Bayern and, and Frankie Dion, who may not even be registered at Barcelona, it's a pretty easy decision. We saw who, who was that Yuri and Timber stopped the, the move from Ajax to Manchester United because Louis van Gaal supposedly said he needs to be playing. He needs to be playing. You know, even Donny van der Beek to a certain point, if he can get going right now, here, like like here's another player that stands in the way of playing. And think about these like, like these guys who are gonna like is, is this the, this World Cup is completely different like this year. He could have a bunch of players who are starting playing week in and week out. Yeah, who is fully ready to go while he may have played four or five games um, throughout until November. And there might be a thing where he's not fully match fit, ready to go to that World Cup. Yeah. And, and, and like, could you imagine? And, and to me, Louis, like Louis, Louis van Gaal doesn't give me that sign as that, oh, he's he, he's super loyal to players. Like, he, it's to me, it's like form is first. If you're not performing, Get yeah, out yeah, yeah man, look, I agree. You know, my final thing, my final thing, and I guess we'll we'll kind of conclude here here in a second. But one thing I know is the conversations that I had between agents, representatives of clubs, you know, players. There, there's all sorts of entourages and all sorts of communication that always happens, right? Club to club, agent to club, all this kind of stuff. Manchester United do not waste their time pursuing a player is unwilling to join their football club it doesn't happen i refuse to believe that over the however many months it's been it feels like six months now i think it's only been two or three but still um over the past two months i refuse to believe that manchester united are pursuing a player who is unwilling to come i don't know whether it's from his agent i don't know whether it's from the horse's mouth whether it's from frankie de Jong to eric ten Hag or to manchester united's uh, key decision makers i will be blown away blown away if Manchester United get to a point where they've agreed the deal, Barcelona clearly don't want him, and they don't they don't conclude that deal. It's a total waste of everyone's time if you're trying to pursue a player who doesn't even want to come. That's the first question, James. Before you talk about wages and signing fee and clauses, you go, you want to come to my, you want to play for me? That's that's the first question, and based on that answer, that's where you go from. Frankie De Jong. Barcelona, Manchester United, whatever team is gonna take this Chelsea, guy. Chelsea, this, this, or Chelsea. Chelsea. Listen, poor Chelsea, man. Like, goodness, they, they've had a horrendous window. Surely they, they surely they gotta get a W at some point. But where does Frankie De Jong end up from here? And is there a chance that Frankie De Jong can play centre back? Do you guys see Frankie De Jong as a centre back? Please comment down below. I know I don't. If if you do, please tell me why. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe, box and box football and we will see you next time.